But I do want to ask you, uh, I I do want to ask you, uh, this is kind of within the whole, uh, under the rubric of, you know, how do you you find these instruments? I mean, but before answering that, just what I'm really getting at is, what's more common to find? Restored old instruments, new mass-produced instruments, or new luthier-built instruments these days? APC. Yeah, start with APC. Okay. So uh, previously I'd mentioned uh, Kieran Maloney, who runs Maloney Music in, in Galway City on the west coast of Ireland, and he carries a line that's made in Portugal. It's called APC. And they make what a lot of people um, uh, reckon is the best playing, the best made um, budget-priced instrument. And unlike... Some of the Asian instruments, they don't put the super, super heavy, thick. Um, Imitation lacquer. Poly, polyester. What's the, right. what's the term? Urethane. Urethane. Yeah. Uh, finish on the, you know, the bulletproof finish, which really kills a lot of the acoustic sound. Yeah. They don't use that. They use something that's much more discreet. And I played a couple of them, and they're quite good for the, for the money. So to answer your question, I'm giving you a really long answer. Um Factory-made instruments are the most accessible, both in price and in terms of their ubiquity. Not that they're really ubiquitous, but you can find them. And you can, and if you order online, um, you can get one with without too much trouble. Um, the next step up would be uh, factory-built instruments that are of a higher grade and a higher price. There are a few mm-hmm. of those, like the old flat iron uh, company makes uh, – uh, an instrument that they call a bazooki that basically has the old flat iron mandola body with, with a longer neck. Um, well, do they still few, make, you're talking about Weber, right? Well, Weber had them for a while and, and then Gibson had them. And then oh, I so they're actually they're set, still a flat iron entity. I didn't realize that. I think there is. I've seen recent examples that uh, are examples made recently enough to make me think they were still going Uh Somebody's got the name. Yeah. I, don't know I did not Bruce, realize. Well, I learned Weber, something, but, uh, something but else. There's also the Weber line of instruments. Now, Eastman uh, right. uh, has some instruments that are uh, also made in China, but a, of a higher grade. Um, and then luthier built instruments would be the next level. And I, I'm of the opinion that luthier built bazookis are one of the best values you will find anywhere because you get a hand-built instrument for, I don't know, you can find them for between two and $3,000. Right. And, um, and it's, you know, some of them are among the finest examples of the instrument that you can, yeah. that, that are being made. Um, uh, and there were great, great builders. In fact, there's so many, you may know about this cause you're on that Facebook list, but I compiled a list of builders and listed them by continent and country, and then uploaded that to the uh, um, to the uh, Facebook group just as a resource for people. Because every day we get new people coming on, people who have bought a bazooki or who want to get one, and uh, and I put that up there just so that the builders themselves could share their contact contact information with me and make and then that way make sure that people find out that they're that they're in business, um, right. But there's, I don't remember, there's over 100, uh, yeah. well over 100 builders. And now, you know, we're, we've been doing this long enough. Peter Abnett is now deceased. Um, a few of the builders who were building in the 70s, 80s, 90s are no longer with us. But luckily, a, a number of them still are and are doing great. Uh, right. And building building great instruments. So. If anybody asks me, I say if you if you can budget for it, you're going to get a lot more instrument for two to three thousand dollars than you'll get if you spend one thousand dollars. Right. Um, and uh, you know, and the other thing is, is you'll not only is it a better investment from a, a resale standpoint uh, because so- sometimes these instruments. Uh, appreciate it to rates way beyond what they were originally sold for. Right. Um, I have a few of those myself just because I've lived long enough. Uh, I got them when they were cheap. Um, but it's also a good investment from the standpoint of, you know, the best instrument 
to buy is the one that makes you want to play. Right. It makes you a better musician because it makes you want to play. Um, so in, in that sense, anything you can afford to put in a, into that instrument is going to be a, a good, uh, um, a good investment. So that, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. And, and you know, low cost factory built instruments are built to be shipped. They're built to be sturdy. Um, those factories, particularly if they're on other continents, build those instruments so that they have to be set up wherever they land. Um, they'll go through a period of adjustment and then you want to take them to a luthier and have them set up. They build them with a high action so they don't buzz when you take them out of the box. So you don't return it, right? Right. But you, you, they do have to have uh, adjustments made. Sometimes you want to change parts out. Um, it's a compromise. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, the cheaper the instrument, the more expensive it is from my point of view, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it, it's the same with your violin family instruments. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I, I – Dabbled, actually more than dabbled in getting into uh, building bazookis, but I uh, retreated back to my uh, uh, comfort zone of, of bowed strings, uh, where I'm once again uh, happy camper, well, I'm, cellos and violins. And I'll go on record saying I hope you I hope you retreat back out of it. Uh, yeah, if, well, we'll I mean, see. I, I'd I'd like to see you build some more some more bazookis because yeah. the one I saw is really really promising. Yeah, it's uh, anyway. Moving, moving on. <laughs> uh, 